Welcome to uh, uh, the Alien Spaceship with myself, Emmy Hickins, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and my co-host, Trevor Gear. And we've got a lovely guest today, uh, Scott Kyle. It comes highly recommended. Yeah. <laughs> so nice to meet you, Scott. Uh, just tell us about your project, Scott. Uh, well, yeah, very nice to meet you both. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. Um, yeah, so so we're currently uh, producing and, and uh, touring a show called Singing I'm No A Billy, He's A Tim. Uh, so we're uh, we're in rehearsals for that, and we, we start the tour at the end of this month. Uh, we kick off in London, and then we tour the whole UK um, for the next two years. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the, the, the show is the 20-year anniversary of the show. Um, so we did, we did the show. We had a break from the show for about 15 years, myself and the cast. Um, but the first time round, we did pretty well. The show crossed over a million pounds at the box offices over the UK, wow. and uh, and we took it to the Edinburgh Festival in 2010. And uh, I was fortunate enough to pick up the stage best actor award. So uh, it's, it's the coveted stage award for acting excellence, which uh, which meant a lot to me because I'd cast myself in the play. So uh, it was like vindication that I'd done a good job of the casting uh, when I went, when I picked up the award. So uh, so yeah, it's exciting to be getting back in. Uh, putting the tops back on again and 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 taking the uh, taking the show on the road again, very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And you did mention something about the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, that, that something. Yeah, so so we're going to be doing the Edinburgh Festival in August this year, um, and this is we're returning after I think it's fourteen years. In, in two thousand and ten, we were there uh, at the Edinburgh Festival, and we were the toast to the Edinburgh Festival. I mean, we had the comedians. Uh, uh, Jason Byrne, Kevin Bridges, uh, Alistair McGowan and stuff all came to see us at the Edinburgh Festival the first time round, and that's uh, where I scooped the award uh, the first time round. So we're going back. I don't think I'm quite defending my title 14 years later, but it would be nice to, to win it again. That would be nice. nice. Are you doing the same role? Scott? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the are. same role. It's the same role, but it's uh, it's 15 years on. So, yeah. so I'm 15 years older, yeah. and so is the rest of the cast. So we're not, we're not we're no longer playing twenty five year old young men. We're now forty year old no. men in the prison cell. Uh, so to, to give your listeners a, a kind of little insight, uh, the story um, evolves around. It's on the day of the big football match in Scotland here, which involves Rangers and Celtic up here, um, and uh, that's predominantly Rangers are predominantly uh, Protestant and Celtic are predominantly Catholic. Yeah. So there's a big yeah. divide in city on those days, and uh, and these two uh, lads they get arrested on the day of the football for non-payment of fines, okay? So they haven't paid their fines and they're arrested on the day of the football. And what they do is they manage to get their wives to put money on their respective team. Uh, they gamble, so they put a gamble in, they're gambling some money. So if their team wins, their wives will go to the bookies, collect the winnings and pay their fine and they'll be out. So the stakes are very high in the show. Uh, the, the the jailer, the, the, the person in the prison cell that locks them up is a guy called Harry. And, uh, and Harry's the... The it's essentially Harry's story, and these two characters come crashing into Harry's world this day. And what's going on in Harry's world is he's waiting on a phone call about his sick grandson. So his grandson's in for a big operation, and he's awaiting that phone call. So as the play kind of progresses, the two boys manage to persuade Harry to turn the TV around in his office and let them watch the big match. So they're having turns each of watching the football match, but also as the play unfolds, they're starting to get an insight into Harry's world. And they start to learn about his grandson and the operation, and the guys kind of come together to try and support Harry uh, throughout the story. So it's a, it's a brilliant, very entertaining piece of theatre, and we use football and and the uh, and the sectarianism within that that particular mm. section of Rangers and Celtic um, to kind of tell the story. But it's a brilliant piece of theatre. Why? Wow. And obviously it has longevity as well, doesn't it? The fact that you can bring it back. Did, would it was it a sort of a, a real stepping stone for your career? Yeah, well, well, what happened with, with my journey into acting is uh, I did a wee bit of acting at school and then I left high school and got a job just working in supermarkets. And then at the age of 21, I went back to education and I, I, I went and studied acting for three years. And what happened well, while I was studying with some amazing students, you know, people that could act, dance, sing, they were fantastic talent. Mm. A lot of them were graduating and getting no jobs. And I was worried that I was going to be next in line. So I set up a theatre company while at college to create work for myself and my classmates. And upon graduating, I went to the library and I found the place singing I'm Not Billy, He's a Tim that we're talking about. And uh, and the, the the play basically 
went from playing in pubs and working men's clubs to playing to 3,000 people a night in Glasgow um, at the SECC and crossing £50,000 a night. Uh, the play did so well that I managed to pay off my mum's mortgage, settle all our wow. debts, uh, and uh, and the plan was to set up home with my now wife. Um, but there was a, a, a turn of events uh, where I lost the rights to the play. So the writer of the play, Des Dillon, exercised his, his right to take back his play after five years. And, uh, and essentially, I lost my business after five years. So it was no, a big no. I a book about this. So this is in the book. So the opening chapter of the book is the night that I lose the play in Glasgow, uh, really? played to the biggest audience we'd ever played to. Um, and uh, and now we're going to be, I'm, I'm rewriting the ending of my book to be chatting about getting the show back and taking it on the biggest tour it's ever been on again. So it's incredible. Excellent. Excellent. And you are a Rangers fan, aren't you? Well, what I say is the show is very well cast, is what we tell people. Yeah. Very well cast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good Sometimes stuff. I think the audience, I think that the fans uh, demand certain aspects of it. They want they want somebody on there that's representing their club and their team. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we, we've tried to cast it as best we could. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know. But Trevor and I, uh, Scott, we're we're big fans of um of plays. Um, so mm -hmm. oh, Trevor's written a song to a play. So so we, we have a play between us. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. We do. And it's called um, The Final Encore. All right. It's called The Final Encore. Um, and what's the plan for it? Are you going to put it on? Is that the plan? Well, we've, that, we've, we've, not, been, we've not been really able to get into uh, that field because Trevor and I are both songwriters and singers. Ah. Right. Yeah. So, so that, as you know, that takes quite a lot of uh, time and, and, and effort. Um, and so we're yeah, not, talent, and talent. You must be very talented as well. So we've not been really able to get into it. So uh, perhaps you could give us some uh, <laughs> guidance on that. <laughs> I mean, the, the best guidance I give to people is that when people ask me for some advice. The first bit of advice I normally say is infinite patience produces immediate results. So if you if you can be infinitely patient in this industry, that you'll get immediate results. And um, and the other wee bit is is to start. So you could, we, we, we started putting our show on in the college that we were studying at, and then we went in, into the pubs, the local pubs, anywhere that would have us. Um, I'm a big believer in acting as storytelling, and storytelling is within every one of us, and it's 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 came from, you know, when we were cavemen and cave women. So storytelling's always been always been there. It's how we've learned everything we've learned, and it's how we teach everything we teach through storytelling. So everybody's got it. It's just finding the right story for you to tell. Uh, and then all you do is take it to the audience and the audience will tell you what's, work, what's working and what's not. The important thing is not to worry about it being perfect. You put it on, you get feedback, you improve it. You put it on again, you get feedback, you improve it and you keep putting it on um, to the extent where we, we're doing a show that we did the show for five years. So we're very good at it. You know, we're very good at it. And we're now revisiting it, you know, over a decade later. And we've went into rehearsals and a lot of the lines are already there. So mm. we're we'll back into things we've already done. So we'll be the audiences will be getting all that experience, the benefit of all that experience, and that's what you want to do is put it on and then keep putting it on and tweaking it and making it better every time. That would be my advice. Absolutely. I mean, it's the same thing. It's in principle with songwriting, isn't it, Trevor? You'd agree with me, won't you? Uh, you just have to you just have to take that first step, and you know, just just keep yeah. improving, improving on what you do. Um, just 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 before we miss out on this very important uh, bit of. The information that you've got to give us. So, when and where is the shows happening, and how can uh, people uh, get their hands on on tickets? Are, are the tickets for sale. So, if people are wanting some tickets, what they can do is they can go on to my website, which is www.scottkyle.co.uk. So that's Scott with two T's, and it's K Y L E. .co.uk, and that's got all the dates on it. Now, the show, as I say, opens in London, and then the show is on the road for the next eighteen months. So we. I'm pretty confident we are coming to a town near you. So wow. if you check out the website, uh, so it's 